The Skypea Arc Review Part 2, Episodes 162 to 166. The Knight of the Sky, aka Gon Fall, has taken Conus and her father someplace safe. He exposits a bit about how much he hates war. When he was god, he strove eternally for peace, but then Enel took over six years ago. Since then, they've been all constantly at war. They are waiting to hear the song of the island once more. Then Gonfal hears Chopper's whistle and takes off into the sky. Meanwhile, on the ship, Shora, the priest with the lance, sets part of the ship on fire. So Chopper rips off the mast and throws it over the edge. If Luffy and the rest of the gang make it through the ordeals, then they all can leave. But Shura gets to kill one of them because they left the altar. Zoro, Nami, and Robin, I mean. Luckily, Gonfall arrives just in time, and a battle begins. Meanwhile, a little girl named Isa is sneaking away from the upper yard with a bag of birth. She returns to her village in the clouds where there's a war meeting going on. Wiper is in charge, and basically he wants to kill Anel, the priests, and Gonfall, basically anyone who's associated with the title of God. Meanwhile, Usopp, Luffy, and Sanji are still fighting Satori. Wackiness! Meanwhile, Gonfall has been stabbed by Shura. He plunges into the water. Chopper won't let him die, so he dives in after him to save him. But Chopper can't swim because of his devil fruit ability, so now they're just gonna both die. Meanwhile, Sanji conquers the ordeals of love and they win against Satori. They make it back to the boat and continue on their way. Meanwhile, Isa has the gift of mantra, which means she knows that Gonfall and one of the priests have both fallen. Wiper decides that now is the time to fight. The warriors all gather and they head for the upper yard. Isa asks a female warrior named Laki to bring some verth back for her. Meanwhile, Nami, Zoro, and Robin have found the other half of Cricket's house. They determine that the upper yard is actually the other half of Jaya. Roll the clip! I get the feeling that Sky Island will hold the secret to Norlin's gold. Instead of sinking into the water, is there a chance that it floated up? to the clouds instead. Yay! Meanwhile, Chopper and Gonfall have been rescued by giant Southbirds. They said they did it for God. <gasps> Wait, we already knew Gonfall was the real God. Meanwhile, Wiper and his gang encounter Luffy, Usopp, and Sanji on the Milky Road. They have a small tiff and part ways. Though Sanji does notice that Wiper was Mask Guy from before. Roll that other clip! I predict that Mask Guy is going to become more prominent. Wiper and his gang battle the other three priests, inadvertently making it very easy for Luffy and his gang to make it through the upper yard. They arrive at the altar just as Zoro, Robin, and Nami are returning. They examine the damage to the ship and also Chopper and Gonfall and decide to camp out on the shore. Meanwhile, Kamakiri sacrifices himself for Laki, who was trying to protect the Verth that she wanted to bring back for Asa. No, not Kamakiri. Do I know who he is? There's a lot of time dedicated to the battle between the priests and Wiper's men. And then they just end up retreating. Meanwhile, Nami has lined up the map of Skypea with the map of Jaya. Remember Norlin's last words? The mountain of gold should be in the right eye, which is right about here. We should totally go there! Then some wolves come. And they all have a party with the wolves! And Gonfall is okay! Meanwhile, Wiper is angry that Kamakiri was almost killed for something as stupid as a bag of Verth. After all, Verth is just soil from the upper yard. That's why it's considered a holy place, because plants can actually grow there. And it was the home of Wiper's ancestors. They'll attack again and win their land back. And that's where 166 ends. All in all, to be completely honest, I was kind of annoyed. I don't think this arc needed another faction at work. In Alabasta, there were so many groups that were going to clash, which is what made it so exciting. But in Skypea, I don't think we need Wiper and his gang. At least this is how I feel at this point. I would have preferred it to just be the Mugiwara crew versus God. 
<laughs> because I feel like that's enough, right? I found myself groaning every time we flashed to Wiper's crew. Because with another group introduced, they also got their own storyline. And it was like, meanwhile, every 40 seconds. So in short, maybe it'll get better. But for right now, it's just too busy. I'm at another dead end with the bad guy. I don't even think his wrath made an appearance in this chunk of five episodes. We did learn that Anel is not the real god, and he did take his position by force. But I have nothing else for you as far as Anel is concerned. And then there's Wiper. I wouldn't call him a villain as much as I would call him an antagonist. If Anel and the priests are Crocodile and the Baroque works, then Wiper would probably be Koza, and then his gang would be the Rebel Army. In that he's not doing anything central to the Mugiwara crew's actions, but he's moving peripherally. Wiper is angry and short-tempered, but he cares about his comrades and their mission. And I think there was also an indication that he was the descendant of a great warrior. Though as of right now, I think Wiper's introduction was carelessly handled. Because he was the mask guy, and he could totally fight, and he's clearly a badass. Though the first time we see him without the mask is through the eyes of a nervous child. They should have introduced him in a way to show that he was in charge of the operation. Maybe if he had the mantra skill, or if he had witnessed Gon Fall or a priest fall. I might have been more fascinated with him, and more patient with his storyline. Anyway, Gonfall brought up a good point that one culture's hero can be another culture's villain. Just because they see him as a great man who has protected them doesn't mean he's not a murderer. Gonfall said this about pirates. They see themselves as heroes of the sea, but the rest of the world sees them as criminals. It seems interesting because of Skypea's heavy focus on judging their criminals. I wonder what they might think of a setup like the Shichibukai, law enforcers working together with criminals. That would certainly not be considered acceptable. Anyway, with the confirmation that the upper yard was actually part of Jaya, implying that the Mountain of Gold is probably on there, will the Mugiwara crew finally get their upper opportunity to pillage and plunder? You know, like real pirates do? I bet they'll find the gold, but I also bet they won't take it. Cause it either belongs to Cricket or to Wiper's people. Luffy would never steal from people he believes are good. That's what I think. Awards. Honorable mention is Gonfall, of course. No one sacrifices themselves for someone they don't know when there's nothing to be gained, but he does. Best pair is Zoro and Robin. For two people who were previously established as people who would probably butt heads, they get along surprisingly well. The best burn is when Shura said to Chopper, if you want to live so badly, then why are you so weak? It actually might have been Shura to Gonfall. Or Satori to Luffy. To be totally honest, I wrote down the quote, but I didn't write down who said it to who. Regardless, it's still a good burn. The triumphant moment is when Gonfall arrived to rescue Chopper. The WTF moment was the wolves? First the conversation, then the abrupt change of heart, and then the party. Afterwards, I was left with this sense of, what did I just watch? The best lol, Sanji's ordeals of love, and everyone else making fun of him for it afterwards. The oh snap moment was a little different. I actually shouted oh snap while I was sitting here by myself watching the show when Nami figured out that Jaya and the upper yard used to be one island. Not because the moment itself was oh snap worthy, but because I predicted it. The best injury is being stabbed through the chest with a burning lance. People get stabbed through the chest a lot in this show. I guess it's not nearly as fatal as we've all been led to believe, apparently. The best fight was Gonfall versus Shura. Airborne battle. That's not what the fight looked like. The MVP was Nami. Even though she was basically useless during the exploration, she always earns her keep when she notices stuff like this. Okay, some predictions. Enel will make his debut sometime soon. And he's eaten some kind of electric devil fruit, since we've already established that he's not the real god. Maybe the City of Gold is where Enel chillaxes, so because the Mugiwara crew is heading there, they will encounter Enel as well. And Wiper will fight Enel first and become gravely wounded and then rescued by the Mugiwara crew and then they'll join forces! Okay, that's just what I wish would happen. I'll see you next time for watching 167 and 168. Bye bye! I 
wonder what they might think of. I wonder how they might think of what? I wonder what they might think about us. Uh, bleh. I wonder what they might think of in the. And Wiper will fight an elf first, and he'll become gravely wounded, and then. No. What? I guess it's not as nearly. No. Because with another group interview. Meanwhile, Wiper is angry that Kamakiri was almost killed by. for. <sighs> Meanwhile, Isa. Isa. Shura, the priest with the lance, sets. Then Gonfall hears Chopper's whistle and sounds off. I don't know. 